what we in the College of Agriculture, and I think we in Kentucky Agriculture, will long recognize as very significant and another step toward the progress of developing the real potential of this state's resources. I know in the audience we have a lot of special people, a lot of people that spent many hours helping in various respects to bring this facility to realization. In the process of our program, and the activities that follow this formal ceremony and so forth, we look forward to giving a personal recognition to all of you. Time will not permit all of that, but on our platform this morning we have some special individuals that, first of all, I would like to go down the line and introduce. First of all, starting on your right, Robert Hemingway, Chancellor of the Lexington campus. Joe Ross, Chairman of the Department of Agricultural Engineering. Clay, Representative Clay Kepper, Chairman of the Agriculture Committee of the House. Joe Wright, really we look to sort of as a godfather and we'll say a little bit more about Senator Wright uh, as the program progresses. Uh, our interim president, Charles Wethington. Uh, Bill Sprague, alumni of this institution, of this department, and likewise a farm leader and one of the vice presidents of Kentucky Farm Bureau. Uh, Charles Barnhart, Dean Emeritus of the college. Elizabeth Pulliam, also uh, one of our farm leaders and likewise uh, has been a uh, the chairman of our legislative committee, and certainly John Walker, who was instrumental in having a lot of to do with the details of helping to plan this building, and also as president of the American Society of Ag Engineers. I would ask you to join me in uh, applause for the platform guests. We have a number of people in the audience I certainly want to recognize and recognize as a group, but I think I'll do this as we are going through our program relative to the perspective from the various segments that go into our programs, that go into really ultimately into the kinds of things we have with this particular facility. On your program, you'll note our first presentations will be from the university perspective. We have a number of university officials. I've had planned to ask all of you to stand as a group. Uh, let me simply indicate to you thanks on behalf of all of us for your input into this. I thank certainly people uh, who have worked behind the scenes and put a very significant effort into as our people in our design construction, our university architect. I think we have Mr. Clevidence here. Uh, uh, is Jack Blanton present? Uh, raise your hand and if the reef starts leaking, you know who we're going to be talking to, but nevertheless, uh, we're so pleased you have joined us and look forward to uh, visiting you as the time permits. We also have a number of our faculty in the audience, faculty not only from Ag Engineering, but faculty from across the university campus. If you would, all of you who are members of the faculty, raise your hand and wave. To speak on behalf of the university officials, first of all, I'd like to call on Chancellor Hemingway to give a perspective from his viewpoint. Chancellor Hemingway. Thank you very much, Oren. Um, the university tries very hard to, to plan, uh, have a, an effective planning effort. And as you can see, a part of the planning for this building was to have a room large enough uh, to still dedicate the building even though it was raining outside. Um, it gives me a, a great deal of pride to, to participate in, this, in the dedication of this facility. Uh, it's, I think, a tribute to all of those who had a part in the planning and design and construction of it. From the research staff and agricultural engineering to the architect and, and the contractor. 
And it's interesting to me personally because over the last few months, this is the third new structure on the, the UK Lexington campus that I've been privileged to help dedicate. The others were the College of Agriculture's Regulatory Services Building and the Center for Robotics and, and, and Manufacturing Systems. I think this indicates a university on the move, a university that's dedicated to providing the structures that are necessary to have a major land-grant university. But we all know that bricks and mortars aren't everything. What makes for a strong academic institution is the quality of mind that goes into the building, the dedication to learning from the, the, whether it's in the classroom or the laboratory, whether it's the faculty or the student, that exists inside the structure. The thing that I feel good about this dedication is that the qualities of mind, the dedication to learning, the commitment to serving the Commonwealth exists in the, in the Department of Agricultural Engineering. They needed this kind of a facility to be effective in those roles, and now they've got it. So we're very proud of what this building represents for the department and for the College of Agriculture. I'd like to say one other thing about ag engineering. Ag engineering is unusual on, on our campus because it's jointly administered by two colleges. And the hand-in-hand -hand spirit of cooperation that characterizes that department, operating both in engineering and in agriculture, uh, in both the staffing and the programs of, of that department, really is a, it serve as a kind of model for, I think, all of, uh, of, our, of our campus. And the best testimony to the effects of that cooperation, I think, comes from the research results that have been produced here. So my congratulations to all who played a, a role in the development and construction of this building. I can assure you that we pledge to the people of the Commonwealth that this facility will be dedicated to the effort of making a better life for all Kentuckians. Thank you, Chancellor. Also in the audience today are other elements of the university community, and I certainly want to recognize our visitors from the Council on Higher Education. I know Gary Cox, uh, Gary, and I think some of your people, you raise your hand and be recognized here. Gary Cox, I think Ann is with him. Uh, we think some very significant things are happening as they relate to the future of agriculture and the role of education in there, and it's been a real pleasure of working with those folks, and I think we're off on the tra right track now from the standpoint of some of the things the Chancellor has shared with us, and likewise some of those goals that we see out there far reaching. We also have in the audience some representatives of some of our sister institutions, institutions that we well recognize are important to the overall education role of the uh, we welcome you and appreciate your coming and spending some time with us. In the process of putting together a facility such as this, certainly you have those individuals that, certainly on that behalf, I think Joe Ross, chairman of our Department of Ag Engineering, has been instrumental and extremely gone much beyond the call of duty. This morning, about 6 o'clock, when we had the big storm coming up and so forth, uh, some of us laughed. Joe probably pulled the covers back over and said, oh my God, what did I do wrong? I reminded him this morning, Joe, it rains on the just and the unjust. And also the fact we're more appropriate to have a dedication ceremony than the water lab on a rainy day. <laughs> We've asked Joe to come forward and speak on behalf of the administration and likewise the faculty of the College of Agriculture. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, indeed, we think it's an opportunity for us to be in this uh, fine laboratory, and, and it certainly is appropriate. Agricultural engineering contributes to every phase of agricultural industry in this state through our research, development, and educational programs. Agricultural engineering has played a key role in the change from the use of animal and human energy to the efficient and mechanized production and processing systems which has so greatly increased the ability uh, for, for us to produce foods in abundant quantities and in great variety. 
Agricultural engineers are challenged today to improve the efficiency of production further, to eliminate potential environmental hazards, and to reduce consumptions of those fuels which may be in short supply in the future. In the ever-changing technologies and economic situation of the state and country, the agricultural engineering profession will play a major role in shaping new concepts for machines, structures, and processes which will be integrated into our farming and food production systems. Some of the history of the department and a short description of our programs are provided in one of the brochures which I hope all of you will read. I think you will find it both interesting and informative. However, this new facility presents a, represents a move into the future for us and was designed with this in mind. During the next sev several decades, we believe the production of foods and agricultural products will continue to become more <coughs> concentrated in larger production units. We believe that the national policies will encourage the production of nutrition, contaminant-free, low-cost foods. We believe that the public concerns for environmental protection will intensify, that cons conservation and protection of our natural resources particularly in the water supplies and soils, would become more of a real and justifiable issue. That agriculture will, will need to provide more renewable resources for industries that have traditionally depended upon natural resources. That more process, processed and manufactured convenience foods will be used worldwide. That foreign sources of quality food products, particularly manufactured foods, will increase and that electronic developments related to computers will provide greater possibilities for the innovative design of controls and decision-making systems. These factors will greatly alter the nature of our teaching, research, and extension programs in agricultural engineering. Our ability to respond and take part in these perceived changes will determine how well we will accomplish our mission. I know that Jim Gibson, the architect for this building, recognizes some of these thoughts that I've just mentioned because they were part of the 20 or so pages of program statement that our faculty and staff developed to help guide the design of this facility. What we believe has resulted from his effort and the many hours of input from our faculty and administration and the staff in design and construction and the physical plant divisions is the best facility for agricultural engineering, teaching, research, and extension activities in the country, and perhaps the world. Of course it should be. Uh, we visited all the other new facilities that were going up around the country, and we got all of their ideas and, and, and looked at, as we looked at their projects and, and uh, found out about all their problems. At the beginning of this project, Dr. Charles Barnhart, then Dean of the College, challenged us to develop a state-of-the-art facility which would serve the department's needs well into the next decade. I believe that we have done this. This new facility provides us with a tool to conduct many new and improved programs. We're indeed excited about the future and pledge to the people of this state that we will use the facility to conduct programs which will serve them. We hope all of you will allow us the privilege of showing you the new facility and tell you about some of the programs that are going on now and some of the plans that we have for the future. We welcome you here today invite, and invite you to return anytime you can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Well, it is a pleasure to come and represent the agricultural community and and as an alumni of the Ag Engineering Department, it's an extreme honor to, to represent the, uh, the Ag Engineers that might be in the audience. One beautiful thing about uh, being away from the university for about 30 years, uh, I'm hoping that some of my old professors uh, have forgotten a few of my classroom uh, addicts anyway and, uh, and overlook uh, some of those uh, faults that uh, that came through through the years. But I think we as uh, farm people and as uh, citizens of this commonwealth can be very proud of this fine facility that we have here that we're dedicating this day. I thank those who in the uh, educators and the Ag Engineering Department who conceived the idea of this building, 
the administration, the university administration who approved the plans, and then the uh, legislators who went to work in Frankfurt to see that uh, these funds were appropriated, can be very proud of this day and the facility that we have here. I think it means much to Kentucky agriculture to have a facility such as this. And you know, I, I'm very serious in thinking that we need ag engineers today more than, more than ever. And I believe as you uh, get a chance to tour this building and see the many, many different complex ideas that are being developed in agriculture, you'll come to a greater appreciation of us, uh, us farmers out on, on the soil. Agriculture is still the number one industry in this state, and I think justifiably so. I think we're learning a real lesson today as we read about the problems in Eastern Europe and Russia. Many, many of these problems are developing because of the inadequate diets that these people have. And it's, it's very imperative that we supply uh, adequate and uh, a safe food supply for our uh, society today if we're going to be a uh, strong and, and a viable society that we all hope to be. And then as we crowd more and more people on this earth, our natural resources are being used at a quite alarming rate. It comes imperative that we put our engineers to full use on how to fully utilize these resources and to do it in a way that is not disturbing our environment so that future generations can also benefit from these. I believe that this building and the people that work in this building will dedicate their efforts to this. And if we do this, we in Kentucky can be quite proud of the accomplishments that we have. There is a tendency to people to uh, think, well, we've got a wonderful supply of food in this country, that maybe we're wasting our, vir uh, our, our limited supplies of funds by building buildings like this or providing money for research and, and development that's needed. But I say that's wrong. We need to put more money into this. We need to put more money into finding the answers that will help uh, supply the food and fiber that this country is going to need. And hopefully, by buildings such as this, and as people see this, and the progress that comes from buildings like this, it'll be easier for Senator Wright and Representative Culper to, to get some of these uh, money appropriated in Frankfurt so that we in agriculture can continue to enjoy the benefits. I truly believe that the dedication of this building today will give a signal to people of Kentucky that we are striving to make the best of our natural resources in this state, that we're doing our best to provide them with the food and fiber that they need. And hopefully we can do that as the safest possible way that this food will be safe and will be done at an economical level. I congratulate all who have had a part in, in doing this building. And uh, as I was telling some earlier, when you have a great building like this, it just puts the pressure on, on uh, Dr. Ross and his department to come up with more and more good ideas to help us in agriculture do the job that we need to do.